My name is Benjamin Franklin Pierce. I served during the war between the states in the 15th United States Army Corps under General William Tecumseh Sherman and Major General John Logan. During the summer of 1864, we helped set in motion a key Union victory in the war. Well, us and the rest of the armies under General Sherman. Back in March, General Sherman had been made commander of the military division of the Mississippi, more commonly called the Army of the West. He replaced General Ulysses Grant when Grant was promoted to command all of the Union armies and hung his hat in Virginia, closer to the capital. Grant trusted Sherman and the two worked well together. The Army of the West actually included three armies. The Army of the Cumberland was the largest, with 60,000 men under General George Thomas. The smallest was the Army of the Ohio, with 13,000 men under General John Schofield. And in the middle was Sherman's old command, the Army of the Tennessee, with 25,000, now under the command of Sherman's most trusted general, James McPherson. Together, Sherman and Grant worked out an ambitious, aggressive plan to bring the war to an end. Grant would focus on Robert E. Lee's army, centered around Richmond, Virginia. For Grant to succeed, Sherman would need to keep the Confederate General Joseph Johnston's army tied up, unable to reinforce the armies protecting the rebel capital. Sherman's plan to achieve that was breathtaking in its simplicity and its promise of destruction. He would march his armies across Georgia and eventually to the Atlantic Ocean, laying waste to all Confederate assets along the way, including the city of Atlanta, the heart of the South. The clock was ticking. In August of 1864, the former Union commander, George McClellan, who had been fired by Lincoln, was nominated as the Democratic Party's candidate for president. His platform called for peace negotiations based on the recognition of the Confederacy's independence. As far as we were concerned, that meant that if McClellan won, the Union Army lost. And it looked bad for Lincoln. The war had dragged on, there'd been too many Union losses, and people just wanted it over. Grant and Sherman needed to give Lincoln a clear and convincing victory to convince the people, the voters, that we would win this war if we didn't give up. War is politics, and politics is war. So, we set out in late April of 1864, moving south out of Tennessee into Georgia. We stuck with the Western and Atlantic Railroad as much as possible. It was our lifeline back north to our supplies. If we lost that, we'd soon be foraging for food, and not long after that, we'd be done. General Sherman made sure his men were trained in rail work, knowing that any Confederate damage done to the Western and Atlantic would need to be quickly repaired. The going was tough. Sherman and his generals knew their business, but so did the rebels, and they also knew the lay of the land. The rebel General Johnston would entrench his army in rugged country where he could hold us off, delaying our approach, making us pay for it. And Sherman would repeatedly flank the rebel army sending a portion of his forces around the enemy's extreme left or right, getting behind them and forcing them to pull back to their next set of defenses. 
That's what happened at Rocky Face Ridge in early May, and we moved on to Resaca, forcing Johnston to fall back and dig in. Fall back! At Rasaka, the rebels fought well, holding us a couple of days and causing more losses to us than we gave them. But again, General Sherman, or Uncle Billy as we took to calling him, figured out a way to flank them and we moved further south. like that for two months, with the Rebs sometimes hitting us hard, but with our troops 